Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as we take a look at the astrological energies from March 8th until March 15th. As we move through Pisces season, and we now have Saturn in Pisces for the first time since 1994 to 1996. So this is a significant change that we've been talking about for a while now. And now that we have Saturn in Pisces, one thing to stay conscious of is your sleep, how your sleep patterns are shifting or changing, what you're noticing about your need for more or less sleep, how that shows up for you because Pisces is the realms of sleep and how our bodies need to rest and turn off and our attention could be brought to those shifting rhythms as Saturn is now in Pisces. Our energy systems could be revealing to us what they need more of and less of in terms of rest, meditation, downtime, and where we need to step away from the overactivity of our minds, of our bodies, of what is going on in the world. And that will be something too that you might notice as Saturn continues through Pisces is that you need more time to yourself. You're looking for more places to be alone so that you can process and hear your messages, hear your spiritual team and your guides coming through through. And this would be one of the higher ways of working with Saturn and Pisces is to give yourself that devoted time to look at where you go and where your energy needs to go in order to recalibrate itself as well as to deepen your connection to your intuition, your spiritual growth, your channeling the messages that you are receiving. So all of this is going to be more prominent. And it is a way to work with these energies that can also feel right on time and very empowering. Now over this next week from March 8th to the 15th, we have strong Aries energies and strong Pisces energies. And this is the overlap between where you are trusting and allowing things to move through without being overly attached or invested, while also feeling the invigoration and excitement for the new and what is showing up and what is calling to you to move towards and to trust. We have four planets in Pisces, Saturn, Mercury, the Sun, and Neptune. And each of those is essentially connecting you with your own soul's essence, your energy that is not in the physical, your energy that is not in the mind, and the parts of you that are aware of the bigger picture of what your soul has been on, and as well as what you're feeling and sensing that really supports what you're doing in the physical world. So this is definitely a time with four planets in Pisces to stay especially aware of what you're feeling, what you're gravitating towards, what you're leaning into as well as what you're stepping back from almost like your body is giving you these messages your intuition and the energy is giving you this message it's not of the mind this is not a strong energy of let me think it through in fact you might feel you need more time to think things through and to sit with it but this strong energy of Pisces and Aries is trusting the feeling trusting what's rising up in you and allowing that to be enough without overthinking it with out assuming that you need to go down all these mental trails in order to have the answer or the understanding. One thing about both Pisces and Aries is that the information can just appear in the moment. You might just feel it. You might just have a sense of this is a yes or this is a no. There might be messages coming through or information, conversations, connections, whatever it might be, that just feel a certain way even if the mind doesn't fully get it or understand. And this is going to be strong, in fact, over this next week as Mars in Gemini is approaching the third and final square to Neptune in Pisces. 
And we know that Mars has been in Gemini since August and has been going through a significant retrograde energy that helps with rewiring and reprogramming that Gemini energy in your chart, meaning it helps you understand more of what you're thinking, what you're doing in regards to the mental body and the thoughts you're processing. So we take action for any number of reasons. Mars in Gemini is bringing us into greater mindfulness, really going into, well, why am I doing this or what am I choosing? And as Mars makes that third and final square to Neptune and Pisces at 24 degrees, there's a sense here of, I don't know why I'm doing this or what's going on truly in the higher realms, but that Mars in Gemini is receiving downloads that can cause mental confusion. And that's where we can keep spinning and circling in things because the energy of Gemini wants to know the specifics, show me the details, show me the true information, but the squared in Neptune removes that knowingness in the moment. Rather, there's a stronger feeling going on. This is also interesting in terms of the feminine and masculine dynamics that are happening, where the very strong Pisces energy is an infusion of feminine energy within all of us, regardless of gender or sex, that wants us to trust our intuition, trust what we're feeling, trust what you're sensing, and allow that to be a a powerful message that you don't have to overthink or figure out. So there is this incoming surge of energy in the Pisces signature that wants us to simply trust what we're feeling. And I'm getting this as being strongly tied into what we're also moving through in the Aries energies. Now, March began with Venus conjunct Jupiter in Aries. Then Venus went on and was conjunct Chiron in Aries at 14 degrees. And on March 11th, we have Jupiter conjunct Chiron in Aries at 14 degrees. And the Aries energy is masculine. It's assertive. It's action oriented. It is a cardinal fire sign, which is designed to initiate. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's try the new thing. Go to the new place. And the Aries energy is where we take action because of a gut level desire, something that we're strongly feeling and sensing that we feel has our name on it. This is for me. I am resonating with this. I want this. It's a subjective energy that is about the self. So we've already been in this Aries energy that's showing us what we're ready to move towards and move into, what new cycle is beginning and emerging before we have the hows, before we have the details. But it's interesting because Jupiter is conjunct Chiron and Aries at 14 degrees on March 11th. And there's something here in this energy signature where you could feel, I'm ready for this. I want to do the thing. I want to say this. I want to go in this direction in my life. And with Jupiter involved, it begins a new 12 year cycle. So there is strong initiation energy coming through. But the connection to Chiron is interesting because it can dampen that excitement and we can feel like There's a very strong desire for the new, whatever that is for you, whatever is opening, blossoming, and expanding. But Chiron holds the memory frequency of past wounds, past hurts, what you've been through, especially in the past three years three years. And so there could be a sense of, I'm ready, I want this. And then the fear or the past memories, the past wounding comes forth. And then you think to yourself, I don't know if I can do this again. And there's something about the weight and energy of the word again that has a heaviness to it. That's just what I'm feeling. It's almost like you get excited for the new job, the new friendship, the new relationship, the new idea, the new adventure. But then something comes up from your cellular memory bank that remembers the past wounding or harm, insecurity, 
the past pain you've been through. And here we have Jupiter conjunct Chiron and Jupiter can be that magnifying glass that amplifies it. And that's where then the ego comes in. And again, it feels like that word is heavy again. Again, I don't know if I can do this again. I don't know if I want this again. And then all the fears rush in, all the doubts, all the insecurities or everything that perhaps you've already been aware of, you've already worked through. You did some deep healing work around the areas of your life that have dramatically and drastically changed in the past three years. And with Chiron in Aries, this is working particularly with any planets or points that you have have in the cardinal signs. So that is Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, especially between 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 degrees of those signs because Chiron's been working with you very personally and removing what your ego was attached to, what was no longer healthy, what was no longer meant to go forward with you. So if something is rising up that you're ready for and you feel like, yes, I want to do this, and then something about again brings you into a full stop where you have the fears of, oh no, I don't know if this is going to fall apart again. I don't know if this is going to crash and burn. I'm afraid of this being hurtful. I'm afraid of whatever it might be, enter in whatever that fear or wound is for you. It's really important to notice and be aware of a few things. Once you have done healing work around parts of yourself and life, circumstances that have deeply changed. You have shifted the frequency. You're not the same. The energy is not the same. And especially with Chiron, we are required to look at parts of ourselves, parts of our lives that really weren't meant to go the long-term distance because there was something that was off in the frequency. And with Chiron, the universe will remove what is no longer healthy for you but it will bring you a vulnerability, insecurity, something to look at that can feel wildly personal and uncomfortable that you're meant to heal through. And once you've done that healing work, you have shifted, you have changed, you are wiser, you are transformed, you see things in a different way, you see yourself in a different way. And that then affects not only your personal self-concept, but it also changes what you then bring in because that energy shift then affects your aura affects all of your energy field, how you connect, who you connect with, and also gives you more understanding of what is happening within you. So the Chiron energies are very personal, but the universe removes and takes away what has served its purpose for you, what has provided a catalyst for healing, or what has shown you more about yourself. So there's something about this energy right now that you are meant to begin again. You are meant to go in a new direction, or perhaps it even feels like a part of your life is gaining energy. And maybe it's that part of your life that's been dormant and heavy. You've done a lot of healing work, but now it's shifting. Now doors are opening. Now things are showing up. And this is the universe giving you the very clear message that you're ready for the next cycle. And it's because you're different now that it won't play out like it did before. So we kind of have to keep meeting ourselves in our fears. We have to keep staying in that place of acknowledging what you've shifted and how you've healed and to know that there has something that's been purified. There's something in your energy that's been purified and you can feel it and sense it at a very personal level and that's yours to own. The Chiron energies remove what is false and even what can unconsciously be damaging us. And in Aries, it's a strong ego or it's being too invested only in yourself. There's things too that we reframe our self-identity. We see ourselves in a new way. We have another awakening experience. So part of Jupiter conjunct Chiron is to own what you've moved through to be honest with yourself about what you're still healing, but to know that the new starts that are showing up are meant to be in the new energy 
And most likely, there isn't going to be things that fall apart again. It isn't going to be a recreation of the past. As long as you've done the healing work and held yourself to a new standard, held yourself to that sense of this is the healed version of my heart, of my self-identity, of my mind, of my ego, of my relationships, that and all of the above, perhaps. But this is where you're really standing strong in the fact that this is who I am now. And I'm ready. I'm ready to go. The universe is bringing it in, lighting things up, getting it moving because I have shifted and changed. And now what's coming in the door or what's opening up is meeting me at that new frequency. This is one of the biggest energies of the week and even of the first half of March. So I wanted to make sure that if you're being triggered by your own wounds, This is where you show up with what you've learned and you understand that we're all fallible. We all have insecurities. We all have parts of ourselves that we're working through. And that's the Chiron journey is that there are parts of ourselves we don't fully heal. We're just aware of it. And we're aware of it more to the point where we own it. And we own it from a softer place. This is a softer energy that's been purified. And it's interesting because I'm getting this image of a heart that's been cracked open. And it could be too that a heart had a tower moment. A heart was really self-protective. I'm seeing a heart with barbed wire around it. This is a very closed off heart. Maybe this was part of your heart if you identify with this. Maybe this is a part of yourself that was shut down. You didn't want to open up to your emotional self or your vulnerabilities. But I'm seeing this heart was really, really closed and it's like a tightness to it. And then the Chiron energies come in and bust it open, break it open. I'm also getting the visual here that when a heart energy is closed, that heart chakra, the heart space, that if things are coming in as a heart connection, it won't connect if the heart isn't open, right? If the door is not opened, the energy can't come through. So I'm seeing that there could have been some tower moments, some breakthroughs, deconstructions of the heart's energy field in the past number of years even that brought you into greater contact with the messages of the heart chakra and what it means to have that part of the energy field open. Because I'm feeling like this could have been something that was really closed down or shut down, but there is an opening that has occurred, but it could have been a painful opening. It could have been something almost like you didn't want the heart to open and then it was forced to. And sometimes that happens through really hard circumstances. Sometimes, unfortunately, a heart opens through a tragic experience or through some kind of loss or something that is really difficult. But the heart can open in so many ways. And it feels like the universe is really asking us to look at where our energy fields have been diminished closed, shrunk, stuck, like it hasn't been in its full glory because right now, especially with the energy on the planet, if our hearts aren't open, we're going to miss what our next steps are. You're going to miss what you're being called to. And it feels like that heart closing is something that the soul has been ushering in the openings for. And that brings up vulnerabilities. It's interesting. I'm feeling this around a strong masculine energy that now it brings up all these vulnerabilities, all these fears. Oh no, I don't want someone to see this part of me. I don't know if I want to share this. I'm not comfortable with all this emotion. So it's almost like these energies are moving through so powerfully that they can't be denied, but there can be a shock to the system And maybe that's part of this newness with the Aries energy. It's like a shock to the system when that heart opens or when there's expansion in the energy field and it can feel like a flood of energy coming in that's overwhelming. Now, for those who have already had a very active and open heart chakra, this is where the energy is coming in and you can feel very alive and inspired and ready to go. And then that energy of again shows up, as I mentioned, 
where it's like, oh no, I don't want this to hurt again. I don't want this to fall apart again. I don't want this to be a painful experience again. So work with the energy of again, if that's what you're feeling. Because once you've done healing work, there is no again. You've up leveled, you're at a different frequency, you're at a different place. And that energy of the word again is not applicable. It doesn't work because you're not the same version of yourself that you were one year, two year, three years ago. So look at where the ego mind wants to keep you safe. And that's how our fears show up because we have the cellular memory bank of, oh, I've been through this before. Oh, I know how this plays out. But once you've done the healing work and you are renewed in a different version of yourself, you have to basically self-manage those fears. You have to talk back to yourself, say, now hush down. This is not the case anymore. I'm not the same version of me. I am different. I am renewed. And I'm able to manage these fears, doubts, and insecurities as they come up. And that is one of the gifts of Chiron. So keep in mind that the energies coming through are busting us open. And that can be wildly uncomfortable, especially if the energy has been closed and clamped down. But this is where there are new energies coming forward to move you into a new cycle and a new chapter that you're absolutely ready for. So this is looking at how you are approaching a new beginning with an understanding of how you've been purified, how you've been opened, maybe even cracked open, and that there's parts of you that are requiring your time, energy, and attention. And it's also validation of how you've grown and evolved. Now we also have on March 11th, Venus in Aries, sextiling Mars in Gemini. And this is the energy of ready to go for it. Information comes in and you say yes. This can be a sense of really getting things moving and getting them started. A lot of ideas, conversations, activity going on. It's happening on the same day that Mercury and Pisces sextiles Uranus in Taurus, which is also inspired action. What is standing out to me here about March 11th is that all four elements are strong. Venus and Aries, fire, Mars and Gemini, air, Mercury and Pisces, water, Uranus and Taurus, earth. It's also the day that Jupiter is conjunct Chiron in Aries, more fire. So there are things coming together through a very interesting synchronicity. And it feels like it's one of those synchronicities that the mind doesn't quite get, but it's the universal energies lining up and coming through. And this is where you could have a strong inspiration to do what you need to do, to go for it. You're ready. Things are coming through and lining up. I'm also feeling too that If you overthink it or you get stuck in the details, you could unconsciously shut something down because this is a bigger wave of energy that you just have to ride. You just have to go with the flow. And so it's almost like jumping in and saying, okay, here it goes. Where is this leading? I don't know yet. And that's the adventure of it. That's the new start because it can go in many places. And each of those places could be fascinating or interesting or beneficial. So I'm feeling a very strong opening energy this week to yourself. Opening to yourself, to who you are now, to how you're transformed, to how you're new, and how that can even be a little uncomfortable. But there's something about right now that we are actually being guided to trust more than ever. And that is part of the strong Pisces energy. So where are you feeling the energy rise? And then looking in your astrology chart, the houses in Pisces and house or houses in Aries is where there is a strong focus. It's where the universe is bringing your attention to these areas of your life, asking you to be aware of them and to trust, to trust how you're feeling. Now, the Pisces energy is also about what's closing out and ending, what you no longer have energy for. And it could be that there's this very fast moving overlap where you're like, I'm done with that. I'm ready for this. It's like within 10 minutes, you're like done, ready. So keep in mind that things are moving quickly right now and that if you're able to 
trust the flow. I feel it as being carried by spirit. There's very strong spiritual energy here that is ushering us in to new territory and new parts of ourselves that have been waiting for you. Think about how that feels. What if everything that's showing up has already been waiting for you? It's been right there at the front door, but you didn't open the door yet and it didn't ring the doorbell. Or it's been right there as soon as you turn this corner. So keep that in mind that there are some really beautiful gifts, treasures, advancements, new developments that are waiting for you. And it's a beautiful time to just go with that energy and see what is around the corner or where you're being called to move forward, knowing that it's for a very divine reason and purpose that you're not meant to fully understand at this time. And to be honest, this is where we can have conniption fits right? This is where we can pout and say, but I want to know why. What's going on? Tell me now. We can be so demanding. But consider how many times in your life you said yes, or you went for the thing, or you moved in a new direction, or you trusted your gut, and you didn't have all the information. And that's the adventure. That's the excitement. That's the going for it energy. And just being open to all the ways it can play out, all the ways things can continue to reveal themselves to you. So as I said, there's an overlap of things closing out, but the new coming in perhaps really fast, perhaps it even feels too fast. And that will depend on how you basically metabolize Aries energy and how you're able to say yes and what that looks like for you in your own energy process. So yes, you can stop and have a conniption fit or require all the details, all the specifics, all the information, but things are moving fast now and you might miss that boat. You might miss that bus. There will be another boat. There will be another bus that comes through with the new, but this energy is moving fast and there is an ongoing acceleration right now and that's also what we've been training for, so to speak. This is why there's been such a heavy focus on trusting your intuition, knowing your spiritual gifts, stepping into more of your energy and how you run energy. Because as the acceleration of energy picks up, there's going to be less time to think about it or to sit with it. There's going to be more of a need to trust what is correct for you or what feels right for you. So no, this is basically going to be an ongoing experience of really going into what feels correct for you, where you're not just sitting in things or resisting the universe, resisting the gifts, resisting the next steps, or denying or pushing them away, whatever it might be for you. This is where the universe is saying it's time to move in to these new beginnings and to know that you're not alone. You're being guided through the power of your soul, through your higher self. And truthfully, things show up because there's an energetic resonance. It's showing up for a reason. And that's part of the excitement as well. So this is about having beginner's mind. This is about being in a place of, I'm going to say yes to this thing. And even if it's crazy and absurd, I'm here for it. Let's go. It'll just be an experience. It'll just be an adventure. And whatever unfolds, I know I can continue to trust myself. And it's yet one more way of experiencing my own energy. It also feels like this is part of a timelessness that Pisces energy also connects with. So with four planets in Pisces, we can feel out of time, out of bounds, out of this world. We can feel ungrounded and that we're floating in other timelines and other realms. And how does that feel when you open up to that? How are you able to just enjoy that experience of the energies without having to label it, compartmentalize it, assign it a purpose? How can you just stay open to the energy as it moves through? And that is going to be something that will continue to be strong over this next week. And speaking of that, we're going to have the sun conjunct Neptune and Pisces at 25 degrees on March 15th. And when the sun is conjunct Neptune and Pisces, we tend to not want to do much. We want a day off from work. 
we want to have less commitments, less on our calendar. And so if possible, this would be a day to plan to have more openings in your schedule or in your world. Perhaps it's a good time to allow yourself to sleep in. This energy happens once a year the sun conjunct Neptune and Pisces. And I feel it as a very impactful download of energies. And that's why we're tired. That's why we're exhausted because we're receiving some very powerful insights from our intuition and our higher self. These are soul level messages that come in and it's almost like we get blasted with them and then it takes time to integrate. Then it takes time to figure out perhaps what was the message or what was was coming up. So March 15th is a very big day of these Pisces downloads coming through. And it could also be where you're just going to need more time to yourself to process, to integrate, to allow yourself to feel into what is calling to you. It's also where you could need more sleep. You need to bring your nap to the office, bring your cot into the office and your pillow. And it's a time to when the mind needs a break. The mind needs less to process, less to sit in, because it can be very hard to grasp the details with strong Pisces. Pisces is about receiving the energies, reflecting on past circumstances or past energies. Pisces is about being able to detach from the ego, the mind, the physical world, and to go into, well, what am I really feeling about this? What am I really sensing? Even if I don't quite get it in the moment at a logical level, at a rational level, what is happening here that I'm meant to understand that my mind wouldn't normally understand? So this is huge intuition, huge downloads. There could even be a sense that you know what you need to do next, that you have a rising energy around the next dream, next chapter, next creative expression. Uh, Pisces is very creative. There's a powerful imagination there. And there's also a powerful connection to our spiritual body, our spiritual abilities and our intuition. So again, big downloads. March 15th is probably going to start March 14th. And it could just be that you're feeling tired and wiped out. You're looking for peace and quiet and less interference. And it would be wise to honor that if that's what's coming up for you and to know that it's part of this ongoing cycle of energies, which astrology is all about. Astrology highlights these cycles and what the strong energetic imprints are so that we can consciously work with them and to also be reminded of how we are connected to universal energies that the mind doesn't understand. And what a beautiful thing that is, that we're so much bigger than our brains. We're so much bigger as energy vessels than our self-identity, than our body. And we can keep expanding and growing because of our connection to these energies. I mentioned earlier how Mars in Gemini is going to be squaring Neptune in Pisces. It's also going to be squaring the sun in Pisces at 25 degrees, 26 degrees. And so be aware of what you're looking to assert or declare because Mars in Gemini squaring these planets in Pisces means it gets diminished or dissolved, almost like the words don't land, the message doesn't get through. Through, lost in translation. So March 14th, 15th, and 16th, it could even feel like Mercury retrograde, like you send a message and you never hear back because it didn't go through, or you mishear someone's words, or someone misspeaks or you misspeak. There's confusion here between our typical capabilities of being articulate and to express ourselves effectively, and then it all dissolving. It's like a fading of a message, a fading of communications. So these are not good or rather strong days for important words to be said. You could have some disappointment that isn't personal. 
It's not personal. Again, it's just like people are distracted. They're not paying attention. They didn't hear what you said. There could also be a sense here of information being omitted, where if you have some important conversations or things going on, discussions and all that, it could almost be like not all the information is put on the table. Not everything is being revealed and your intuition can be picking up on that. Sort of like there's more here to the story and I don't know what it is yet. Or there could be that energy of I feel like this person is not giving me all the details, all the information they're holding back. This could also be the case with you where there's things you don't want to say or you don't want to express so you hold back all the information. That's part of how things can be misunderstood, misconstrued. It's also where people can feel lied to and that there is harm to trust where you could think that someone was supposed to tell you all the details or give you all the information and they don't and then it just feels off. So keep that in mind. During the middle of March here, again, I'm going to say March 14th through the 16th, that there's going to be some things that you're just realizing there's more about this that's going to come forward. There's more details, more information, and you might have to go find it after the fact. Now, it doesn't mean that people are being intentionally deceptive, but that's what this energy signature is. It's sort of like, oh, I'm just going to tell a harmless white lie or I don't want to hurt their feelings, so I'm going to say it this way. Now, this is also about checking in with your integrity and your self-respect and your personal standards because if there's more you need to say and express that's honest, that's truthful, give yourself time and I would say don't do it during March 14th to March 16th. Wait until... March 18th, if possible, or later in the month, if possible. I know it's not always possible, but there's things too around how we use our words, how we remain in the full power of our energy, and how we don't dissipate our truth, dissipate the information, or shrink it down. Especially when you're an empath, an energy reader, you're highly sensitive, and you can pick up on what other people are feeling as you speak. So it's sort of like being in a conversation and you say something and then you know right away that that person feels uncomfortable. Part of your energetic responsibility is to understand what's yours and what's not, and that it's absolutely necessary to speak your truth and be in your power without feeling responsible for how the information lands or how somebody receives it especially outside of how you intended it. Now, Mercury is in Pisces and Mercury is going to be in a very active connection in the second half of March. Mercury is going to be conjunct Neptune, then squaring Mars, then conjunct the sun. So that's why I'm saying that stay aware of your communication. And if you feel like you need to bite your tongue or hold off or it's not the best time to have a discussion on a particular topic, trust that. Trust the strength of that instead of watering down your message. Trust the strength of the timing so that you can say, hey, let's talk about this in a week. Let's circle back. Let's come around and revisit this. But allow that to support you instead of thinking that you have to hold back or water down any truth or the clear message because it feels like the strong Pisces energy working with Mars and Gemini is to look at how you continue to trust yourself and you don't shut down the throat chakra. You don't shut down your third eye or what you need to share or say. Rather, this is more about the timing of the message, the conversation, the discussion. It's the timing of it. And when you work with that, I feel too like there could be some things that energetically move through if you were to delay a conversation or if you were able to say, hey, I want to share part of this with you today, but I have more to share later. That's another way to work with it where, yes, so there's things you might have to approach, meetings, conversations that are on the calendar. You've got to show up and you've got to take care of them. 
But this energy feels like give yourself a part two. Give yourself an ability to clarify or discuss it more because around these middle dates of March, things could feel like they're not understood properly. Again, lost in translation or the intention is missed or something is removed and it just kind of feels wonky. All right, that's the scientific term. It just is going to feel a little wonky or off. So give yourself an opportunity to say, hey, I wanted to follow up with you about the thing we discussed or what is in front of us. And I think we can clarify it more now. So part one and part two would be a good way to approach any big discussions or conversations over this next week. This is the last full week of Pisces season before the sun enters Aries on March 20th, followed by an Aries new moon. Pluto enters Aquarius. Mars enters Cancer. We have a lot of energy shifting up in the second half of March. So continue to trust what's in front of you, what needs to be taken care of, what the priorities are. Continue to trust as well what you're done with. What no longer has energy? What is no longer calling to you or is of interest? There could be things that just gently fade away. And that is part of Pisces. There's a gentleness to it, a kindness, almost like you're working with the energetics more so than anything. So trust that for yourself, whatever it might be, because it's all part of the beautiful cosmic dance of energies. And when we can trust that, we are remaining in a very beautiful synergy with those cosmic energies. On Monday's podcast, I'm going to be discussing Saturn in Pisces as it relates to those of you born in the 1960s because you have a very strong energy in your chart with planets in Pisces and Virgo. So we are going to dissect that a bit more in Monday's podcast and I hope that helps you understand what is coming up for you, how to move through this transiting Saturn in Pisces Pisces energies and how it also might be giving you some new choice points to trust as well. So we'll be talking about that on Monday. This past weekend, we had a beautiful gathering of souls in Sedona for the Awakening Astrology Retreat that was so incredible, so beautiful. And I just want to acknowledge those of you who showed up for this, who came through, who were really willing to go into these places in yourself that were waiting for you. One of the ongoing gifts of astrology is how we connect our consciousness to it, and it really opens up powerful insights for us, big transformations, new self-understandings, really awesome parts of our life to also find peace with and understanding. So for the 70 people who were there and in person, we had a beautiful time, beautiful connections, and it was also a wonderful opportunity to feel safe and to understand how we're not alone in this journey by any means. Plus, we had some very interesting and exciting developments in Sedona with the weather, with the energetics, very memorable. And this is also why it can feel so good to come together in community and to connect with people you wouldn't normally meet or run across and how there are reunions here and reconnections that happen. And just to know too that you're never alone, especially if that's how it feels in your 3D reality. You're never alone in these energetics and that there are millions of people who are also passionate about astrology. So it's an exciting time to be diving in to this ongoing ancient energy system that holds so many treasures for us. In this Wednesday podcast, we're looking at the transiting astrology energies. And if you're ready to learn more about that in your own chart, I have a course that's about how to learn astrology transits in your chart. It's 50% off with coupon code transits, that's plural, transits. And it shows you how to look at and track transiting Saturn, transiting Uranus, transiting Venus, all the planets in your chart. So please check that out if you are newer to astrology and you want to learn more, you want to understand all these various cycles in your chart. 
This is where you dive in to more of the specifics in your life. You understand what's coming up or what you're moving through. You get these breakthroughs of, oh, wow, this is why I've had to work really hard at this part of my life because of where transiting Saturn is right now. So this is an awesome way to dig into your chart. And I wanted to let you know I have that available so that you can basically become your own astrologer. You can know your own energy even more, know the bigger themes that are unfolding for you, and really step into more of that connection with astrology. So check that out. I'll put the link below this podcast. And in the meantime, wishing you a beautiful beautiful week ahead as we continue to sail through the Pisces and Aries energies. I hope you feel a rising trust in yourself, in your path, and in the new beginnings that are coming up for each of us at this time. You can find out more about me at mollymccord.online. That's where you'll find all of my latest programs and business development courses. I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. On YouTube, you will find so many free videos in my playlists. So please check those out as well. And it helps you dive into more of your chart. So I'll see you back here on Monday. Have a beautiful week ahead. Thank you so much for being here as always. And I look forward to connecting with you again soon.